Thank you. Um, well, this is the last part of my name. It's uh, Verbeek Must. Um, recently got married and added my girlfriend's last name to it. Um, up until last week, I was working at Booking.com uh, as a front-end developer. Um, but I now joined a startup in the Netherlands called Sprunk. And I'm also the organizer of uh, the Frontiers Conference uh, this year, um, which will be the 10th anniversary, which is cool. So um, I will also not go tell you what it all says, um, but it's a talks calendar um, about localization of a calendar that we did at Booking.com. Um, so these are almost all these are part of the languages that we uh, localized in. Uh, we a total was 42. We did not localize in Klingon, even though I really wanted to, but it's for some reason not a lot of people speak Klingon. Um, but before I give, give my talk, uh, I want to tell you about a little bit what my talk is not about. So it's not about the, the things that we probably already know, that date and time is difficult. Um, if you really want to know what, what we all think that, that's correct about time, there's a cool article called Falsehoods, Pro uh, Falsehoods Programs Believe About Time. Um, it gives you a whole list of things that is weird about time. And if that's still not enough, there's also more Falsehoods Programs Believe About Time. Um, so yeah, you can just look them up, and they're very cool. As I said, I was working at Booking.com, and uh, we had this calendar that we used for uh, people that own an apartment or a small hotel, and uh, where they can see their reservations, change the prices, and things like that. But the problem was it wasn't really actually a, a calendar. It was like this infinite scrolling list where you couldn't see any data on. You have to click three times before you can actually get the real data. Um, so we got a lot of feedback from our users that didn't really, didn't really look like the other calendars that they were using, like uh, the competitor with the red logo, which I cannot tell. Uh, so uh, we decided to, to, to change our calendar. We did some user research about what we wanted to do. and. Um, so we did the implementation, and we started out with making some sketches. Well, this sketch was made by uh, someone else this morning, but it's still a cool sketch. But we started out with some sketches and uh, implemented our front end. Um, yes, and then uh, actually we, we used Perl at booking.com, so we had some Perl code, and you actually don't want to touch a lot of that, so we just tried to use the code that was already there, and that was it. Uh, for the calendar. But then we needed to localize. There are 42 uh, different languages at booking.com, so, uh, and even more regions, which I will tell you a little bit later about. So if you're German, you might know that this date format in the front and in the two is not really how it looks in Germany. And probably you're also used that the euro sign is at the, at the, at the end. Um, things, things like that. Um, if you look at the US, it will actually, this, the week will start at Sunday. Um, the, the, time, uh, the, the date format is completely different. Uh, the price is dollars. Um, and for those, those dates things, we actually decided to use uh, Moment.js. It's also not a talk about Moment.js, so we'll briefly grow, uh, go through it, what we, what we did use. But uh, Moment.js has a very good localization data as well. Um, this morning, Matt was talking about uh, JS Joda and date, that's not the right name, date functions should it be, um, and about the ECMAScript temporal proposal. So if you want to know about those, just go watch his talk when it's online. So we had this, uh, so, so say we have this sketch. We, we implemented the sketch, and we wanted to add the, the names of the weeks all the way on the top. We need to know uh, well, what, what does the first day of week start with. It, uh, it starts with Sunday or Monday. You can e easily get that from Moment.js uh, with Moment.local data. You can get the first day of week, and we'll return you one, a zero or one. And then you can get the names of the week in the locale that you've selected, which will, in this case, generate uh, Sunday through Saturday. And we use that at the top. And then we needed to get the uh, the first day of the month, which of the well first day of the calendar, which is interesting because uh, it's not the first day of the month. So we uh, used uh, 
uh, we could just use start of month and then start of week and then get the, the number of the date and add that. And the same goes for the, for the, end, of the end of the month and just fill them all out. So that was um, easily to generate the first part of the calendar. Uh, and then we, I needed to find what, what kind of uh, format does this, uh, uh, does this country uses. And it's uh, not always, uh, it wasn't very easy to find, but it was somewhere in a, in a more private variable called long date format, and then we used the capital L. And that is was basically it. So I'm going to go through this very fast, but just to get a sense of what, what, what we were kind of working with. So after, and this was basically the, the localization then for all the languages very easily. So then we went on the testing and uh, just going through the languages to see if everything is, is okay. And then we, I hit the bump that I always forget, and that is RTL, uh, which stands for right to left languages. And those languages are things like Arabic or Hebrew languages. So, which is, if, so if you have this calendar, you, it's not only the script that goes from right to left, you actually want to change everything from right to left. So for, for example, you want to switch the, the right column to the left, and then also switch, uh, switch everything around as well, so that your, your Monday also starts with right, uh, on, the, on the right side, your week. Sorry. Um, so this is all done in CSS. So you just change your float left to your float right, your margin left to your margin right. Um, if you have something inline or inline block, it will automatically go to the right side. The only thing here that's, that is not being done by CSS are the two arrows. We just switch the functionality around because if you click on the left arrow, you want to go to a, mo a month in the future instead of in the past. We could have also just rotated the arrows, which would have been easy with CSS. So we just clicked through everything, fixed a few bugs, um, and then we went on to more testing. Um, sadly, not unit testing. If you want to know about unit testing at booking.com, you can give me a few beers later on, and I will tell you a whole lot about unit testing at booking.com. I don't work there anymore, so I can now tell you everything I know. <laughs> uh, but so what we, did, what we did was we added just a whole bunch of our users into a beta group. Um, not asking them because why would you ask them? Just put them in a beta, and they they will, uh, and then add a feedback at the top where they could do a thumbs up and a thumbs down, uh, and get a, a little bit of feedback, just a text area. Uh, what do you want to know about users giving you feedback? There's not always that useful. Most of the time, it's just very short, uh, very short strings. Like, well, these were the positive ones. We finally have a much better overview and a lot of the new interface. Um, but, but they, or they give you a very long thing about, uh, about how, how their life is and how good a calendar is in their life and how they finally found the, the, the right person that they want to be with just because you have the, the new calendar. And it was, there's, there's weird stories in there which I will not show. Um, but there's also just some, some bad things, like hate it, bring the old one back without saying why they hate it, and who made this smiling uh, chocolate ice cream, I think. <laughs> but if you really dig into all the feedback, you, you will find some obscure things that they will, will tell you, which you have to dig through your code to figure out what was actually going on. Because those, these are bug reports, and not in the sense that your testers or yourself would write a bug report, but more, hey, listen, your my reservation is showing up. And then you think, great, um, what now? Because I cannot contact the person, really. Um, so, well, what I did do is I saved not enough data. I, it was a big mistake for me. I just saved their user ID and uh, the language that they selected, and I should have done a user agent and a whole bunch of other things, but I was lazy and I implemented too little, which was, that's, that's a mistake, don't be too lazy with these kind of things. Um, so I had two things to work with, 
to do some bug fixing. And those four examples that I will just give you, uh, that I just gave you, I will go through them because these were the four most interesting things that I found, and which cost me a lot of detective work to figure out what it was. So we had uh, uh, some reservation data on our calendar as well. So it, it showed you more than just a blue bar. It showed you the name and things like that. But um, one person, it's just one random person said, well, my reservations aren't showing up. And they gave a little bit more data about which specific reservation didn't show up. And it was in October 2016. There's this reservation, the 15th through 16th. It just wasn't there for him. And that was weird because I tested it and it was working. That's how it usually goes. It works on my machine. Um, but uh, for, for him, it didn't work. And you don't want that because they will get overbookings and lawsuits. and all. So first off, just looking through my code, see if I could figure out anything which was a problem. And then I thought, well, it must be some localization thing because that's mostly where, it, it, where the problems originate at booking.com. And I figured out this person lives in Brazil. So first step, changing the language to Portuguese, um, specifically Brazilian Portuguese, because we have that in our uh, the website. Uh, I couldn't reproduce the bug. So next step, I changed my, the time zone on my laptop to uh, be uh, uh, minus three, because I saw that they were uh, based in the capital. And it still didn't show up. The, the, I couldn't reproduce the bug. And then a colleague sitting next to me said, well, here's the bug. I have it. And, Wait, what? What did you do? He said, well, I switched to Portuguese, changed the time zone to minus three. Said, well, OK, let's just check out every, any other settings that we might have. And I, we couldn't figure out for a very long time until I noticed um, there's a wiki page on time in Brazil, which gives you all weird data, like their, uh, their summertime is different when they have uh, carnival during the time that they would normally switch to summertime. Um, but also that not their entire uh, uh, country adheres to summertime. So I thought, well, it couldn't be summertime. It's October. Uh, but I was just forgetting one of the falsehoods, I believe, about time, which was summertime is always in my summer, which is not true for the southern hemisphere, of course, because then summertime starts in October. So what the case was is that my colleague selected the capital of Brazil as their, his time zone, and I selected a city just north of Brazil. And that city north of Brazil didn't adhere to the summertime, and his, the capital did adhere to it. So, OK, I found a crappy piece of code that I wrote, which compared two different dates. And there was one thing that says, add one day. And I learned that in Moment.js, add one day does not mean add one day. Well, it sort of does, but it just adds 24 hours. So which comparison, comparing this, um, it basically meant that uh, day A was never going to be the same, because day A would, would uh, be 1 a.m. while day B would be midnight. Oh, by the way, uh, smart quotes in Keynote, not fun. The day there, sorry. So I just switched the, the ad, uh, I switched them around and it was fixed. <laughs> Great. Uh, I could also fix my code, make it better, but mm. I was leaving anyway. Uh, so another thing was why are closed dates red? Um, a very obscure question, but uh, they, they, I, they came up in different, um, uh, different kind of strings, so I could figure out that they, it said, if this date, if they closed it, so I don't accept any reservations, we show this red bar. Well, that's good, right? Um, so what do you think of this? Is this a good day at the stock market? Um, I wouldn't think so, but this is a very good day at the stock market. Because in Eastern Asia, um, red often means that it's something, something good instead of something bad. So where their convention is something is close and you're showing this is good. Um, it's not very fun because sometimes you show that it's good even though they close it because they have a funeral or something and you don't want to do that. So we switch it around to make it gray and that 
people that was neutral enough for people. So um, learning from this, just watch out with colors because you can do uh, things wrong for some countries. So the third one is that the, the date selection is not working. And this was our date selection. We had the from and the to. And when you click on it, it showed you the jQuery UI date picker. Why jQuery UI date picker? Um, well, because we already used it, so we're just reusing things. And at first glance, that doesn't seem like a big problem, but say you have this, this date, like we, you cannot really see what, year, what, what month and what day this is, so you have to get the date format for a moment to see, well, okay, this is month, day, year, and then if you want to change that, if you want to connect it with the, with the date picker, you can do parse date, and then it says month, day, year, and then you, you add the date. But this gives an error. It's just, this does not work, because jQuery UI uses this format. Um, month, day, year, lowercase, and then the year changes to two Ys. Um, so I created a little script for it, and it, I already did this, so this was before the bug showed up. Um, so I created a script, put it this, by the way, on GitHub if you ever need it, I hope you will not need it, but it's on GitHub. Um, and the problem with this script lied in this part. So if you were here a, talk, a couple of talks before about regular expressions, um, this was a very easy regular expression. It, it kind of finds the slashes and dashes in, uh, in, the, uh, in the date formats just to figure out where the delimiters are. If you're from Germany, you've probably already figured out the problem because most complaints come from German users. Um, it also needed a dot because it's, uh, the format in Germany mostly is a dot in between. So I thought, well, what the hell, let's just change it to slash w and then be done with it. And okay, that worked. Most of, the, most of the people didn't report the bug anymore, except for one country. And I told you that I saved the language of the country, and I actually saved the full language name. So I saved this for the country, uh, country that was uh, a problem. So I thought, okay, um, which language is that? So I used my, my very great tool for that, Google Translate. Google Translate said, okay, I detected this is Slovenian. Are there any Slovenians in the room, by the way? Are there any Slovakians in the room? So the top one is Slovakian, and the bottom one is Slovenian. Um, it's a slight difference. So after, after I checked in Slovenian, I thought, still not seeing the, the bug. And then it's, it, it says in the bottom, did you mean this? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> so Google Translate does know that this word is in Slovak because if you just change the language to Slovak, it translates it. So, um, so what was the problem here? The date delimiter was dot space. Great. <laughs> so just adding a plus to my, uh, to my regular expression fix everything. Maybe something else broken, but at least it fixed this. And the, f the last thing that I want to show you is has nothing to do with date or time. It has something to do with the prices that aren't showing, aren't showing up properly. So we, we have the reservation, we have the number, we also showed the prices. Um, showed up perfectly fine. Nobody, we, we checked, nobody ever had a, a a price that was higher than uh, uh, 99,000 euros, so should be fine. Um, but we, yeah, not, not always. So this was uh, 1 million Indonesian rupiah, I think. So it's not always just about dates and times, it's also about prices, it's about changing the colors, it's about cultural differences as well. So, uh, I think I went a little bit too fast, but um, my conclusion to wrap this up is a couple of things. So, do not make any assumptions. Um, that's, that's basically what a lot of people already said at numbers of different conferences, but even if you read all the assumptions people make about date and time, there's a lot of assumptions that you're probably still going to make. 
And localization is not just translation. Translation is a part of localization. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's more than that. It's cultural differences. It's, it's date and time. It's, it's colors. Um, well, just, not just about data time, also colors and things like that. Gathering meaningful feedback, so not do things that, that I did. Um, it's gathering feedback from the users is great, um, but it's just save their user agent, save the URL that they are on, um, save maybe the way you look at languages, so maybe instead of uh, the Slovenian word that I said, or the Slovakian word, just save SK, which makes more sense for programmers, and bugs will happen. It doesn't matter how much you test it, it doesn't matter how much uh, uh, experience you have in localization. Um, every time you do something, bugs will happen and they will always be there. Uh, even if you fix all the bugs that people are, are giving, uh, are reporting, there will still be localization bugs because sometimes people are just used to localization issues and change their language to English just so that they know this probably works better. Um, but localization is still important because if you, if you uh, don't have German language, a lot of people cannot use your website and you can say, well, I don't have a lot of Germans on my website. Yeah, that's because you don't have German language. So if you add something, it's, it's just part of accessibility. Um, and bug fixing is like being a detective. It's, it's just digging through all the code. It's, it's actually kind of like being a traveling detective because you had to, I felt like I had to travel to all different kinds of regions just to figure out what the problem was. I didn't actually travel because if that was the case and I could travel for bug fixes, I might still be working at Booking. Um, so uh, have fun with your bug fixes and just feel like that you're actually trying to find something that no one else has ever done before. Um, so, thank you very much. Uh, this is my Twitter handle. Uh, if you want to follow Frontiers, this is the Frontiers Twitter handle. My email address, I love getting emails. It's my ICQ number. Thank you very much. <laughs>